that doesn't make you feel like it's Easter Sunday, I don't know what will. Lizzie, Caroline, Jacob, you rang the church bell. And um, oh gosh, I, I got a little teary thinking about what that is typically like. It's Easter. It's Easter. Oh, so we're going to do something so crazy, so crazy. Um, I'm going to invite everyone who wants to, to unmute yourselves. I'm going to say Christ is risen. We will have the cacophony of Christ is risen. Indeed, we'll do that a couple of times because why not? It's Easter. So if you want to participate, unmute. If you don't, you can just laugh. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. More time. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. Amazing. I could pick out your voices. I could hear you. It was ah, oh, amazing. Joy. We celebrate resurrection today. We celebrate new life. We gather and worship all of us together. And we've come as we are, exactly as we are, the beloved children of God. And I love it. I watched your faces as you came in this morning. I know some of you are really dressed up and some of you are in pajamas and amazing, amazing, amazing. We, we come as we are, who we are to greet this day to experience resurrection, to see God. If you don't know me, I'm Reverend Amy. I'm so delighted we're worshiping together. Um, if you are on YouTube, we're so happy you're here. Although come over to Zoom. There's no reason to be live on YouTube when we have Zoom and we have a lot more fun. There's just a few Zoom things I wanna tell you just in case Zoom is always changing things. Um, so just two, two three things. Um, if you move your mouse, if you're on a computer or a laptop, if you're on an iPad, it's a little different. But if you're on a computer or a laptop and you move your mouse around, uh, you click the view button on the top right of your screen, I would encourage you to go ahead and click speaker view. It'll put the person who's speaking as big on your screen and it will really change your time in worship this morning. And then at the bottom, there should be a little word bubble. It looks like a cartoon thought bubble. If you click it, it's the chat box. It opens the chat up for everyone so we can share, we can talk, especially during prayers of the people. We talk, type in our joys and concerns and it allows us to be present with each other. On this Easter morning, it is amazing to gather and worship. I'd like to say welcome, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter where you are on your journey with life and faith and God, we are all welcome. We all belong in this shared sacred space. If you have a candle, I invite you to light it. If not, um, feel free to meditate on my candle. And I chose the pink candle, as a lot of you know, who have been with me all of Holy Week, which is left over from the Advent wreath. It's the joy candle, because last Sunday, we committed to carrying joy in our hearts all week. And so, of course, on Resurrection Sunday, we light the joy candle. And we light this light in the name of the God who creates life, in the name of the risen Savior who loves life. In the name of the spirit, who's the fire of all life. Take a breath. Let it go. Be still and aware of God's presence within you and all around you. This morning, our liturgist is Pam, and she's going to lead us in our responsive call to worship. She will speak out, and then at home on mute, you will respond with me um, with the bolded sections. This is the day. This is the day. 
When tears are wiped away, shattered hearts are mended, fears are replaced with joy. This is the day the Lord rolls away the stone of fear, throws off death's clothes, goes ahead of us into God's future. This is the day the Lord has made. Death has no fear for us. Sin has lost its power over us. God opens the tombs of our hearts to fill us with life. This is the day, Easter day. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let's join together in singing our response. created all that is good and beautiful. Very early in the morning, a mother placed her newborn in a manger. Very early in the morning, the good news was shared with frightened friends that Jesus was risen and alive in our midst. On this morning of hallelujahs, give us the words of good news. Give us strength to offer healing when we feel uncertain. Give us energy to serve your creation. Teach us to live our hallelujahs. We are the Easter people and hallelujah is our song. I invite you to lift your voices as we sing this morning's hymn together. We can solve Easter morning, we know some Easter day. Tell the Lord that Christ is risen, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia.
Hear these words from our sacred text. This morning's reading is from John chapter 20, verse 1 and 11 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This morning, we conclude Lent is ending, right? Easter. Um, and during the season of Lent, we've done a series called The Poetry of Lent and had a companioning Mary Oliver poem for every week. Um, this morning's poem is Morning Poem and Barbara is going to read it for us. Every morning, the world is created under the orange sticks of the sun. The heap ashes of the night turn into leaves again and fasten themselves to the high branches and the ponds appear like black cloth on which are painted islands of summer lilies. If it is your nature to be happy, you will swim away along the soft trails for hours, your imagination alighting everywhere. And if your spirit carries within it the thorn that is heavier than lead, if it's all you can do to keep on trudging, there is still somewhere deep within you a beast shouting that the earth is exactly what it wanted. Each pond with its blazing lilies is a prayer heard and answered lavishly. Every morning, whether or not you have ever dared to be happy, whether or not you have ever dared to pray. Mary Oliver. Thanks, Barbara. Mary Oliver, one of our Easter Marys, has reminds us that we come exactly as we are, happy and joyful, carrying the deep wounds in our souls. We come here to this sacred space together. And we're welcome exactly as we are. We never have to put on anything different or a special happy face to be present in this space. We are ourselves fully. I've been loving the spring weather. I know the some of us are a little nervous about so much spring weather so early but I've been loving it. And Josiah and I have been out in the yard kind of getting ready for the garden. He wanted to plant everything weeks ago, but the nights are still cold. And so we've held off. But a couple of weeks ago, really like early spring, maybe the first warm day when he and I were out and we were getting our pots and our beds ready, our landlord, Mr. Joe stopped by and he also wanted to do some yard work. And so he was working and I was working and Josiah was working or playing, you know, let's, are they different? 
And it was lovely. And after a while, Mr. Joe, who um, he spends every winter in Florida, he usually goes right around Christmas and comes back after Easter, but didn't this year because of the COVIDs. Um, Mr. Joe came over, you know, still distance masked to me and said, you know, I have to tell you that spring is completely different when you have walked through winter. It's like, yeah. <laughs> It is. Spring is so different when we walk through the long, cold months of winter. And we've walked through the longest and most unexpected winter. And we are longing for some spring. We've lived through over a year of COVID. Job losses, separation from friends and family members. We have grieved over all the things that are easily named and our hearts grieve over the small things we can't quite put into words. We feel the blanketing numbness, the sadness within us. We are itching for new life. And I know I'm itching for new life because you all know my friend, uh, Pastor Jess, she and I are both kind of nuts. We, we've preached to you twice. Surely you've grabbed this by now. But we've been taking pictures of like flowers we see, like little crocuses and whatever we see when we're out and like texting them to each other. It's gotten to the point where Josiah will see a flower and say, take a picture, send it to Pastor Jess. We're itching for new life. We're longing for new life life. And so we come to this Easter text this morning, and it says to us at the very beginning early, on the first day of the week while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. Why did she come? She came to take care of Jesus' body. She came to plant flowers. She came in grief. She came in hope. Mary came while it was still dark and found the thing that no one would have dared to expect, an empty tomb. What was it that happened in the darkness? What is it that still captures our imaginations that changes everything? We are acquainted with grief and the difficulties that dwell in the dark spaces. If you've lived through more than a year of COVID, we see the darkness of institutional racism, police brutality, gun violence. And really we need only look just around to notice the cracks in our institutions, our healthcare systems, our educational system, our clean water sources. We're tired of the darkness and we are ready for the dawn turning to light. But I hope that in our exhaustion and in our deep desire for resurrection, in our desire for hope, we don't miss the lessons the darkness is teaching us. Theologian Debbie Thomas says it this way, maybe we need God who dwells in light so bright that God covers us in merciful darkness to protect our fragile sight. In my own life, clarity, hope, and healing come when I'm willing to linger in the hard and barren places, places where the usual platitudes fall flat and the easy answers prove woefully inadequate. While I don't believe that God causes the hard things to happen in our lives and in the world, I do believe that God uses them to clarify our vision and to nurture the seeds of new life that are growing inside our hearts and our sacred imaginations. Easter's the story of how God took the brokenness of death, destruction, and crucifixion and transformed it into new life through resurrection. God made something 
new, something even more beautiful than we could have imagined. Hope is our story. We are the Easter people and Alleluia is our song, always. Growing up, I used to think that resurrection was like the very end of a play or a musical or a symphony, the grand finale, right? Jazz hands, jazz hands, resurrection, Jesus walks out from the tomb and scene. But now I realize it's not the ending. It's the beginning of the next act. And we, beloved people of God, we're the players. We are the tellers of the story that's being rewritten. God is inviting us to co-write this story of hope and life, no matter how quiet or subtle it may seem. We are the unfinished symphony and we're living it. We're part of it. We're breathing it. And so we tell the story because the world around us is aching for hope and we've glimpsed it. I wonder, will you walk the path of Mary Magdalene sharing the good news of the greatest hope as you find it, as it's present in your life? This Lent, we've journeyed with Mary Oliver. She has been an amazing companion. But as we walk into Easter, we ask ourselves how resurrection, how hope is alive in us. And so this morning gives us two Marys as our guides, Mary Oliver, the poet, Oh, we love her. And Mary Magdalene, the first preacher, you know I'm always going to bring that up. Every Easter, Mary Magdalene, first preacher. The two Marys have advice for us on how to carry this practice forward. Pay attention. Where do you see new life and growth in your life? Where do you see it in our world? Notice it. Name it. Don't let it pass you by in the middle of our world that feels tired and cracked and hurts all over. See it. Number two, be astonished. It's easy to allow doubt and cynicism to cloud our vision and dampen our excitement. Like Mary on that first morning, what changes in your heart if you allow yourself to be astonished by what is beautiful around you? Notice the flowers poking up from the ground. I don't know, take pictures and text them to me. You clearly now know that will bring me deep joy. See the grassroots movements of justice and peace breaking out into our world because that's what speaks back to the sorrow and the fear and the despair. Don't just give it a head nod. Let the beauty and the wonder of it fill your soul and energize your spirit. Number three, tell about it. Share what you see. Share it with your friends. Share it with your, the strangers. Share the beauty. Invite others to see how hope is blooming in us around us, among us. Mary took her message forward to so many people that these unnamed folks on the road to Emmaus were talking about it. Bear witness to the impossible beauty of hope. And make no mistake, resurrection always happens in the darkness. The light has lengthened into morning. The new life of spring has arrived. May you go in peace this week to believe. May you go in peace this week to live. Pay attention. Be astonished. Tell about it. Amen.
we come together in our time of community prayer. And we do this every week because this practice reminds us again and again that we don't carry things alone in our own little private circles. We, we hold our joys, we hold our pain, our fear, we hold it all. And God holds it with us, but also there's a community of people look around. We pray for each other, we care for each other. That's what it is to be the people of God. And so if you're carrying something this week, a joy, a concern, a celebration, whatever, type it into the chat box and I will read it aloud and we will celebrate, we will pray, all of it together. What are you carrying? One piece of celebration I have, I heard from Deb on Saturday, I think that Addie has been sprung from rehab. She's met all of her rehab goals. She's back at Deb's house and feeling better, doing better. Her spirits are high. We're so, oh, we're so glad to hear it. And the other that I want to share, and I'm totally calling out, but I just noticed um, as I was looking through again, I look through at all of you all the time. Um, while Ed was playing that Ruth is here with us this morning. We're so glad to see Ruth and to know how her body is healing. Amazing. David um, asks that we pray for him. He has an operation scheduled for the next few days. We do. We pray for David. We pray for Liz. We pray for their girls. Um, Terry reminds us um, to hold in prayers all who have lost a loved one during this pandemic. And especially we hold up Terry, um, who's still grieving the death of her mom. We hold up Russ, also grieving the death of his mom. And more, more, more in our midst, more beyond us. Joan asks that we pray for her sister-in-law, Susan, and her brother-in-law, John. Um, John just came home from three months in the hospital and nursing homes, and it's just harder than he anticipated and harder than Susan anticipated. We hold them close. We hold them in our prayers. Jesse um, and Jess ask for healing from a sickness that they have, and they are grateful for hope that they feel in being able to celebrate Easter with this community this morning. Peter and Patty ask for prayers for their sister-in-law, Joan, whose mom died yesterday. And Alice and Jim, who lost Jim's mom on Thursday. These losses always reverberate, but especially during these days where we typically gather and hold each other close. Um, Mike lets us know that he did, you know, previously test positive for COVID a couple of weeks ago, as we know, and we've been praying for him and praying with him. Um, but thankfully he's had no symptoms and his quarantine ended on Thursday. And so we celebrate, we celebrate that. Judy lifts up Helene, who's gone to the hospital with a mental health crisis. We also pray for the children at Willis House who are receiving Easter baskets this morning. We pray, we celebrate their joy. Um, there's so much. We hold so much. And my friends, God hears the prayers on our hearts, whether we speak them aloud or not, whether we know them or not. Pray with me. Risen Christ, when darkness overwhelms us, may your dawn beckon us. When fear paralyzes us, May your touch release us. When grief torments us, may your peace enfold us. 
When memories haunt us, may your presence heal us. When justice fails us, may your anger ignite us. When apathy stagnates us, may your, you challenge us and renew us. When courage leaves us, may your spirit inspire us. When despair grips us, may your hope restore us. And when death threatens us, may your resurrection light lead us. God in community, holy in one. Hear us this morning as we pray, as Jesus taught us, saying, our ever-loving God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Whenever we gather as the people of God in the presence of God, there's always a time to respond. We respond by offering our prayers, remembering that we don't carry the burdens of our life alone, but we also respond by joining the movement that God is doing in us and among us because we don't gather just for an hour once a week and then move on in our lives. We gather and take the light the love, the peace, the justice out into our community and into our world. And of course, at South Acton Church, this is what we are always doing. I think I mentioned a few minutes ago, the celebrating the kids at Willis House. Um, that's, that's one of the things we've just recently done. Our children put together Easter baskets for children who live at Willis House who maybe weren't going to have Easter baskets this year. And amazing. Small things, great things. We are always the hands, the feet, the presence of God. And so I want to celebrate the ways you give generously to this community that allow us to touch far more than any one of us could ever touch alone. And I know most of you mail your checks and your offerings and your tithe in, but also some donate on PayPal. So I'm going to put that um, into the chat box just in case anyone wants it. But let's sing the doxology with joy and celebration. still happening at South Acton Church. We always do. Um, it's a little quieter than the last week because it was Holy Week. And whew, tomorrow we will not have morning prayers. Reverend Amy's going to sleep. Um, if you want to gather and pray together, I bless that um, and trust you. But I will be around again on Tuesday for coffee from like 8.30 to 10. Um, Wednesday, of course, we have mindfulness. Thursday, we have Bible study. If you've never come to Bible study, 
it's probably not like Bible study you grew up with. Maybe it is. It's not like Bible study I grew up with because we invite you to bring your wine or your bourbon or your beer or your tea, or like whatever you like. And we just sort of read the text and we chatter about it. And it's, it's always a little wild. Um, so come, if you don't, I'll throw my email address in the chat box. If you don't get our e-blast and you don't have all the Zoom codes, we would just be here forever if I was giving those to you and, you know, we have Easter brunch to eat. The other thing I wanted to say, um, yesterday I received, and I thought I had it, but of course we're here and I have a drawing from my child and not what I was going to hold up. This is how life is. Um, I received a letter in the mail. I don't know if any of you received a letter in the mail from us, um, but our stewardship team, our generosity team, my goodness, they are amazing. But they sent a letter encouraging us, those of us who received um, a stimulus payment to think with generosity and with gratitude about these unexpected gifts we've been given. And of course, um, of course, of course, of course, some of us need every single penny of that. Um, and we, we understand, I understand that we all understand that, but not every one of us does. And so how can we spread generosity in the world was their question to us. How can we spread it in our communities? And they had ideas and, um, Josh and I actually sat and talked a long time. It spurred conversation in our family. I hope it spurred conversation in your family. And we decided for us, um, and I don't usually share these kinds of things, but I am today. Um, we decided that we are going to split our generosity of what we can give from the stimulus check between South Acton Church because we believe in the mission of peace, love, and justice of this community. And also the Lewis um, D. Brown Peace Institute who we support with the Walk for Peace, who's doing amazing work to bring peace and hope um, to the victims of gun violence in the greater Boston area. But here's the thing I've been thinking about, and I saw it in the letter, but I've been thinking about it. So the last Sunday, if, if you are gonna give and you're splitting your gifts, um, I was wondering if you would send it to the stewardship team or to me. And the last Sunday in April, I would love for us to gather and bless these organizations who we are sending our love and support to, who are we are being generous with. Um, because you know we're a blessing church. We love to bless things, prayer shawls, backpacks, whatever, we bless it all. Um, so that's that's my like a little unusual announcement for this morning. Um, but yeah, well, let's bless some things right at the end of the month and bless the generosity in this congregation and bless what God does with these seeds of generosity as they go out into the world. It's not Easter unless we sing Jesus Christ is risen today, or at least I don't think it's Easter. We didn't have a recording of the choir doing the song because they did the amazing ringy bells of Easter morn. However, I was talking to a Lutheran colleague and she said, oh, wait, I have something for you. So she sent me a big, the ELCA, our kind of colleague Lutheran church, um, did a big Christ the Lord or Jesus Christ is risen today that they shared with us. Um, and we've shared with them ring ye bells of Easter because we are always sharing and partnering. So I invite you to sing loudly and beautifully Jesus Christ is risen today.
Amen. One of the gifts of this pandemic is reminding us how interconnected we are and how much we belong to each other and what a joy it is to share our gifts. I have a blessing for you. Um, and then we have a special postlude. Some of you uh, remember the that we did a town-wide ecumenical hallelujah chorus at Christmas time. And since it is our tradition to sing the hallelujah chorus at Easter, we are playing it again for our special postlude. So you'll see yourselves and your friends and people from town as we sing together. But first, receive this blessing. Be blessed, my friends, this week. Be whole, be healed, be loved. So why is it that you linger? You have seen, and so you are already blessed. You have been seen, and so you are the blessing. There is no other word you need. There is simply to go and tell. There is simply to begin. Go in peace, go in hope, go in love. Amen. Happy Easter. Lord of